So Blackmagic Design keeps adding in all these new tools to make DaVinci Resolve the one-stop solution when it comes to video production. And today we're taking a look at something that they just recently introduced, which is their sound library. Okay, so typically when you're working on a project, you would just have your media pool and all of your videos here. If you were to add in sounds or sound effects, typically what you would do is when you had your audio that you wanted to add in uh, as you were going or at the beginning, because you knew that there was a bunch of sound effects that you wanted to use, you would just take them and drag them in and then you would have them in here for you to later use. And you, would, you could go through here, pick whatever it is that you wanted to use and then add that to one of your audio tracks below. Also, one of the cool things you can do, if you didn't know this, is if you have, let's say, a folder and it has a bunch of subfolders and you just don't want everything to be scattered in here, what you could do is you could take that subfolder and drag it over here. And if you drag it over here, what happens is it'll keep the folder structure. So now all of these files are currently in this project. So if I was to archive this project, all of these folders and files would now be a part of this project. And the, the big problem, what happens is when you're doing sound design, you might have a library of you know, 20, 50, 80, 150,000 sound clips that you could use to build the atmosphere of a scene. You really wouldn't want to add all of those into your project. Solutions in the past were an external program that would run a database and that would have all of your files and you could search things like auto or you know car. Then the database would have all the metadata to be able to find, okay, these are all the files that currently exist and here are the location. So those programs would actually be able to look at multiple hard drives. If you had networked attached storage or if you just had a huge RAID array, it would be able to look into those and find those files. And then once you would find the clip that you would wanna use, instead of uh, using the whole uh, file, you would just pick the, the piece that you would actually wanna use and then you would render that and then bring that rendered file into your editor. And a lot of the programs would actually work with the editor. So once you rendered out the little clip or the little piece of audio that you wanted to use, it would then just push it right into your project. So that was a solution so that you didn't have to bring all of the files into your program. And so the sound library works the same way as a lot of those external programs works where it just builds a database of metadata and you can allocate where you want that database to be built from. So when you would, when you click up here to sound library, you can click this little button, add to library, and then you can look through all of your files until you find the folders. I, I would normally pick like a, a top level folder that would have all of your audio in. So here I have my sound effects. And if I add this in, well, I already have added it in. Do I wanna relook into it? And it now just recently found six new ones that were added, but what, would, what it would do, it would look through that whole thing and all the subfolders and find out all the audio files, and then it'll pull, it'll extract the metadata and its location. So anytime, let's first go into my project and let's pull um, some of my shots that I have here. So let's use, let's use this. Perfect. We could add some stuff in here like um, chimes in the, in the distance or we could add in uh, wind blowing or something like that. You could come into your sound library and just put in wind and then it'll find all of your all of your files that have that particular thing in. Now it took a little while to actually build the, uh, the wave here and that's because it doesn't have any of that information until you request that. All it has is, you know, the file names and the descriptions. That's all it has. So it's very lightweight. It's not using anything and you don't have to keep adding it to your project. So once you add it to the sound library, it stays in your DaVinci Resolve. So if you have, you know, a hundred thousand tracks, you don't have to 
every time add them in, you will just, they'll just always be here and you can just search something and then you can find, you know, you can click on one and you can hear whatever those tracks are. Uh, and then you would be able to add them in. You can cut them wherever you want and then you could just drag them and add them in and then they'll be in here. You don't have to render anything or do anything like that. One really cool thing that I like about this is if you actually go over into your Fairlight tab, let me get rid of this and actually bring up my meter so I can see that clip. So if we're over in the Fairlight tab, one of the really cool things is they have this new button here called Audition. So let's go back into Wind and let's say we listen to this track and I, let, let's say we want to add that in, wherever your mouse cursor is, is where it will just pull it into, right? So I'm not going to cut either end because I want to use the whole thing. I just click on the track, add it in here. Okay, so I added it in. Now I want to listen to it while watching it. I can do that, but you know what? This clip isn't really working for me. So let's go to another clip. Boom, it's automatically pulled out of your project. Now it's not a part of the project anymore because you never confirmed it. Once you confirm it, then it becomes part of the project. It doesn't, it's not in the project at all, but you can add it in to see if it gives that good feel. Once you confirm, then it becomes part of the project. Then you can manipulate it more. Um, one of the other things that's really cool, let's see here, chimes. So let's say that there is uh, two cars hitting each other or you know you have two swords that are hitting each other or you have a phone that's sitting down and it's ringing you know and there's going to be a point where the screen's black and then once it starts ringing the screen will light up right so you want to cue that on a particular frame right so the cool thing that you can do you're going to have to pretend a little bit here but let's say that this was a shot that had a particular cue on it where we had the chime just sitting and not moving, right? And then once the wind blew, then it went doo -ding, doo -ding, doo -ding, right? So we had that particular uh, point where we took our mouse cursor right when we see it start to move and then we're like, okay, I want to cue in my chime. So I'm listening through here and trying to figure out where I want to have that cue point. Let's say right here, right here where it, it stops and then it starts, okay? So we'll just, I'm using my uh, arrows left and right. So right here is where it is. I can click this cue point, right? But let's say I want it, I want the, the audio clip to actually start here because maybe there's something in this that, that makes it sound good like a or something of that nature. We're pretending here, right? But once the chime hits, that's when we want the sound effect, right? So we have our cue point here, but we're picking more of the shot or more of the audio clip than um, just that, that little portion there. So let's say here's my out point. So we have our in and our out point, and then we have this green line here, which is our cue. So then over here, we move our, our cursor to right where that cue is, right where it touches the, the side of the chime, right? We're actually gonna have that sound effect. So we're, we pick our audio track that we want, and then when we hit audition, before they would just at your playhead, that's when it would start. Here, once you pick the cue point, it's going to lay that track so that that cue point is lined up with your playhead. So let's say, you know, we, we have someone in the room and we're working together on this and we're listening to this. Okay, you know what, that one's not working. So you can just go to something else and try it, you know, something else. But yet, our cue point is still here if we wanted to come back to it. But the cool thing is, is that you can test audio tracks, but not have them be a part of the project. See, when you get into uh, doing short films or feature films or whatever it may be, you know, you could have hundreds, if not thousands of little files all over the place. And if half of them you're not using and they're just sitting in a project and just bloating a project, you know, that becomes a problem when if you, if you have another editor that needs to use it. 
And then when we hit confirm, it's now in the project. So I can then manipulate this more if I wanted to add different sound effects onto it or whatever it may be. Now I can do that now that it's in here. And I didn't have to go through like the whole process of rendering the clip out or a small portion. It's just, a, it's a really cool tool that they recently added in. You know, it's the beginning thing here and we're still on public beta. So I'd be interested to see what other things that they add in and uh, other information that they have in here. You can currently at the top here, click this button and it'll just shrink it down so you don't see the waveform. Um, you can add in different parts of a library. You can also build um, different databases if you wanted to, to use in here. I haven't played around with that much. I don't know what in, what that would entail. Currently, you can only see the name and the description. Um, I'm going to guess that they're going to be adding uh, potentially a bunch of other filter fields. Um, but yeah, that that's kind of it. Down here, you can rank them. Um, it says what that particular track is, if it's two channel five, whatever. Um, but yeah, I think that this overall is a very cool tool just because you don't have to bring everything in. And at least for me, I never really was huge into the audio side of things. So I would just always open up a folder. I would look through the folder. I would end up using the Windows search tool to find a particular audio track. Then I would listen to that audio track and I would skip through them. And then once I'd find the one I want, I would then drag that into my project. But yeah, now we don't, you don't really have to do any of that. If uh, you end up using this, I uh, let me know in the comments what you think of it. And um, if you are an audio guy and you did use one of those other tools, what is this lacking and, and where can it improve? Because like I said, I haven't used those, so I personally don't know. But yeah, with that said, let me know in the comments what you think about this one. If you have any ideas or suggestions that you'd like to pass my way, leave them down there as well. Again, my name's JR and thanks for watching.